My name is Jackie Werner and I'm the Scholarly Communications and Research Librarian here at PCOM. And today I'm going to be talking about gray literature. First question, what exactly is gray literature? According to the first, Fourth International Conference on Gray Literature, it defines it as that which is produced on all levels of government, academics, business, and industry in print and electronic formats but which is not controlled by commercial publishers. In simpler terms, it's information that is unpublished or not published commercially, yet can still be of a lot of interest um, when publishing. This includes annual reports, blogs, book chapters, conference papers, emails, patents, newsletters, speeches, etc. So, um, uh, gray literature is in opposition to black literature or black and white literature, which are peer-reviewed publications in commercial databases, aka journal articles that you can find by searching uh, PubMed, Google Scholar, etc. And most of your research is going to be done using peer-reviewed uh, published studies, I'm referring to those. However, there is a lot of information out there in gray literature that can be really important. Why should you care? Gray literature contains key information that and information that has not yet been published. Uh, it significantly affects outcomes of systematic reviews. It's more gray literature is more likely to report negative or inconclusive data. AKA it's a lot easier to get uh, your paper published if you're showing good results, but to get an actual view of what is going on in the field, you probably have to look at gray literature and see the th the results that aren't getting published, but give a fewer, but give a um, give a better look at what it actually is um, has been found. Uh, looking for gray literature also helps you avoid repeating research or reinventing the wheel. If somebody's already done what you did, then uh, you might want to do, then you're going to want to do more than just a quick uh, look at the published literature because someone might have tried it and not found good results or didn't publish it for whatever reason. And gray literature is hard to find. So gray literature is actually uh, required if you're doing a Cochrane review, which is uh, some of the highest standards of systematic reviews, because without gray literature, you're not getting a full picture of what is out there. So how exactly do you find it? The first step would be institutional repositories. So hopefully you're all familiar with uh, the digital commons at PCOM. And uh, repositories like the digital commons are um, collections of work done at that institution. Like here, we could see that that includes faculty and staff research, um, resident research, student research, along with all of our, um, a bunch of our archival uh, and historical stuff. And the Digital Commons is used for repositories at a lot of different schools. And it will, it's able to search across all repositories that are hosted on Digital Commons. Here you could see under search, uh, it defaults to in this repository, but I selected across all repositories. And this is, Digital Commons is a great place to start um, to look at theses and dissertations. A lot of programs, uh, students have, are required to upload their thesis or dissertation, um, make it freely available on the Digital Commons. And under uh, student research, many of our um, dissertations and theses are fr freely available for you to read. Uh, it's also, great to search for some course materials, presentations, or other unpublished works, including preprints, 
which I'll go more into later. But that usually depends on whether or not uh, researchers or faculty are actually putting those things on the digital comments themselves. If you're interested in a specific institution, just uh, Google for their library website and see if there's um, a link to some sort of repository, digital commons, etc. So here's what a search uh, would look like. Here I search for physical therapy across all repositories, not just PCOM. And uh, this will search for everybody who uses B Press Digital Commons, which is a pretty common uh, repository across institutions. Once you've found a work, um, you could click on that and over here on the right hand side, you could see it's included in the Physical Therapy Commons and Physiotherapy Commons. So if you're looking for all sorts of works in a specific field, not just specific keywords, you could search for a work and then go over to the uh, subject commons. And there are commons for pretty much every subject that you could think of. So let's check out physical therapy commons. And here we go. We have three over 3000 full text articles, uh, links to popular institutions that publish in the physical therapy commons, popular articles, and related disciplines over here. Then under search this commons, you can search for, um, you can search for within, uh, just within this commons to find something more specific. Also, you can filter for certain types of work, like if you only want to find unpublished work um, or only want to find presentations or posters, then you can include that while you're searching the commons. Next, your next step would be subject repositories. So digital commons are institutional repositories. Subject repositories are the same idea, except instead of for a specific institution, therefore a specific subject. So this is a screenshot of BioArchive, which is a preprint server for biology. And preprints are basically scholarly articles that are pre-peer review. And these can actually be published on their own, not published through an academic publisher, but just um, put out into the public. A lot of the times you'll see if somebody publishes a preprint, they'll put it on a specific server. Like um, here's BioArchive. This has a lot of biology. Um, there's also MedArchive. And here you can see there's links specifically to COVID preprints. And preprints are, um, are very interesting because most of them are eventually published. Uh, they'll go through peer review with some go through changes and then be published um, as a usual black and white literature article. But in some fields, some important results are only published in preprints. Mostly you're going to see that in fields like um, something like mathematics, where peer review uh, is, isn't quite as necessary. But generally, preprints are really good for finding the absolute newest work. Something that, things that you might want to keep in mind when you're designing your own studies and doing your own publications. So BioArchive and MedArchive are offshoots of Archive, uh, spelled the same way, just A capital R, XIV. And that is a multi-subject preprint repository that has been around since 1991. Preprints have been very important for the physical sciences um, for a very long time, uh, even before the internet was invented. So, um, and BioArchive and MedArchive are newer. MedArchive is very new. So, preprints are really interesting, uh, great to look at when you're doing research. Just be very careful because they aren't peer reviewed. 
So it's not going to have the same authority as a peer reviewed published article. Oops, let me go back there. Uh, next, you might want to look at data. And data is a really interesting aspect of gray literature. A lot of times data is connected to published articles. Um, for instance, if you go to an article uh, that you're interested in, there may be an, um, you may be able to actually just download the actual data that they analyzed. And depending on what type of study, um, this is always going to be anonymized. Some information uh, may not be included to protect privacy. But if you want to run, say, your own analysis or look at a different factor that the authors did not, then you might want to take a look at, um, at data for specific articles. More funders are now starting, uh, starting to require that anyone who gets grants from them make their data freely available online. So uh, best way to find that, again, if you ha have an article you're interested in, just go to the DOI, the article website, and see if there's a link to download the, um, the data. There are also repositories of research data and same as institutional or subject repositories, but all they have is our data sets. And this uh, screenshot is of RE3 data, which is a registry of research data repositories. And there's no big single place that you can search for research data. So the best way to do that, if you're not looking for um, data linked to published articles, is check in RE3 data for specific data repositories. Like here we have the keywords down here, there's 100 different health repositories, uh, 12 economics, etc. And uh, you also, another great way to find research data is government websites. Uh, the CDC, the WHO, um, and sites like healthdata.gov, anything with an official government um, website, as you, which will have b.gov. Uh, health data from the government is frequently made freely available. Same with other countries or worldwide uh, institutions. So that's another really good place to look if you're looking uh, specifically for wide ranging healthcare data. Now, most of these resources are um, talking about things that are freely available, but there's also gray literature that isn't published for free on the web. And for that, you can look at some of our library databases. First off is Scopus. And here you could see a search I did in Scopus, zoomed in on the document type filter. And Scopus um, collects conference papers book chapters and data papers, which are basically um, just research data published with something explaining exactly what it is without an actual article attached to it. And you can, uh, when you do a search in Scopus, you could go to document type and just click on the only ones you want to see. Uh, conference paper here. You can also click view more and then see um, some really specific uh, document types. If you're looking for gray literature, I'd also recommend uh, looking at Embase. Unlike Scopus and PubMed, Embase will, um, will get conference abstracts. Now, this isn't going to find every app every abstract of a poster presentation presented at a conference, but it does get some major ones and it's the best library database to find them. So if you want to see uh, what's being presented in your field, what hasn't been made to a paper yet, and you haven't gone to a specific um, conference, then I'd suggest looking at Embase. You can also find uh, things like book chapters in here.
And once again, there's a publication types uh, filter once you've done the search and you could look for conference paper, conference abstract, etc. If you're looking for dissertations and theses uh, specifically, there is a database ProQuest dissertations and theses, which has exactly what it sounds like. Here's an example of a search, um, 17,000 results. The searching can be not quite as nice as some as um, something like PubMed or Scopus or Embase, but you could find what they're look, you're looking for. Unfortunately, sometimes these can be tricky to actually get a hold of the text of the dissertations and theses. If, if uh, you go into this database and we don't have access to a dissertation or thesis, um, take a look, see if you could Google the institution or the researcher, and they'll be able to, um, uh, the researcher in particular, many researchers are just, will happily uh, send you a copy of a dissertation or thesis. And many institutions, um, we can get, we might be able to get dissertations and theses through interlibrary loan. So if you're looking for a dissertation or thesis, um, just shoot us an email, library at pcom.edu or me, J-A-C-L-Y-N-W-E at pcom.edu, and we'll be able to help you uh, see how you could get your hands on it. Next, I'd recommend uh, MedEd Portal, and this includes a lot of uh, teaching resources, course materials, along with peer-reviewed articles on different topics. This is great if you are, if you're teaching, uh, less so for doing research, but this is a wonderful way to, um, to make sure that you're not reinventing the wheel. And finally, OneSearch, which is the main search on the library homepage. Uh, OneSearch searches a whole bunch of our different databases, and this is a really good place to start if you're looking for trade publications and news articles. So things related uh, and produced by a field, but not quite peer-reviewed articles. Once again, do a search, and then under sor source types, you'll see a whole bunch of options, even magazines, trade publications, news, and, and things like reports and videos. And after that, we at the library don't always recommend that you use Google but Google can be really good for finding gray literature. If you go to Google Advanced Search, you can really narrow down your search. Um, this lets you do things like search in a specific site or domain. And if you search for something like .gov or .edu, then you can make sure that everything you get is a government website, um, educational website, etc. Under file type, you could look for uh, specific information, such as um, you could look for specific types of files. If you're looking for PDFs or Word files, PowerPoints, you could look for that in file type. Uh, there are also search engines specifically for many types of gray literature. So to find those, you could just Google um, and look for things like uh, report, study, or white paper, and whatever keyword you're looking for, uh, lung cancer, etc. And for example, if you're looking for clinical trials, there's a site clinicaltrials.gov. Uh, if you're looking for patents, uspto.gov is a search engine just for patents. So it's a good idea to take a look at, um, at just what types of gray literature are, are out there and figure out which ones might be relevant for, for you. Then Google, see if you can find a repository for that. 
and then you're ready to go. And these are our further resources, um, the sites that I mentioned in this presentation. And this will be linked on my selected works page. Uh, I'll upload the PDF of this, which is a great example of gray literature, an educational presentation. Um, all right, so I'll include the link uh, in the description of this video when it's on YouTube. And if you have any questions, just please shoot me an email and uh, I'll be happy to help you. All right, happy hunting.